Austria and mountain biking. It's complicated. Despite being a leading nation in mountain tourism, Austria still seems to be stuck in the dark ages when it comes to mountain biking, making it one of the most unwelcoming places for mountain bikers in all of Europe. But look at this. On April 10th, there came an announcement that Austria is moving towards a national mountain bike strategy, which is some very exciting news. So let's take a moment to talk about what the situation is right now and what this might mean for mountain biking in Austria in the near future. At the moment, we have some very extreme contrasts, not only within Austria itself, but also between Austria and its neighboring Alpine countries. For example, if you look at places like Salbach Hinterglem, Leogang, Petzen, or something like Bike Republic in Selden, these are absolutely top-notch prime examples of very advanced mountain bike tourism. But then when it comes down to riding natural trails, the general rule is that basically, everything is forbidden unless expressly allowed. Before we dive any deeper into the subject, we need to touch on two major truths here. First of all, mountain biking is one of the, if not the fastest growing mountain sport on the planet. This industry has basically been booming and there's no signs of this slowing down or stopping anytime soon. The second truth is that the climate is changing and even if you don't believe in climate change you will see that during these last years lots of European ski resorts have been dealing with less snow and shorter seasons. So they are desperately trying to find ways to leverage their existing infrastructure and to adapt to the changing realities. So it does not come as a surprise that many of these pioneers in promoting mountain bike as also summer activity Lots of these pioneers are actually these ski resorts themselves who have been investing lots of time and lots of financial means into developing this. Now there comes a third part, a third aspect, and that is the simple fact that people will want to ride their bikes on the existing network of trails, the existing natural trails up and around in the mountains. Not only the locals, also people visiting. Now this is something that's very hard to stop, something with a lot of divided opinions, but we are seeing more and more studies that show that bike traffic is not necessarily more destructive to the trails than hikers, for example. And we also need to remember that trails do not just exist out of themselves, even hiking trails, any form of trail has always needed and will always need forms of maintenance. Bikers are not necessarily more destructive than hikers, especially not if the traffic is more spread out over multiple regions, larger areas, so less people always doing the same trails, which is something that comes more natural when using the natural trail network is in fact legal. Now, this video does not have the intention to go into the details of the effects of trail usage or erosion and all that kind of thing. No, let's go back to the topic. Let's go back to checking out to what the current rules in Austria are, what its effects are, and what the Austrian politicians are hoping to change in the near future. A very strange and very frustrating fact of life in Austria is that the rules that are governing mountain biking on the existing trails have been made and put into place long before mountain biking even existed. And these rules are harsh, they are strict. So let's take a quick dive into the Austrian official websites and see what they're saying about this. A quick look at the Austrian government website tells us Das Fahren im Wald ist grundsätzlich verboten. So the base rule is that riding in forests is forbidden unless explicitly allowed by whoever owns or manages the land. This is in stark contrast to other alpine regions such as Graubünden in Switzerland, which calls itself the home of trails and where shared trail use is the norm. Or France, where national parks have very strict rules, but anything outside of that is shared use. Both Switzerland and France are seeing enormous advantages to their mountain communities by being open-minded and proactive when it comes to mountain biking. But in Austria, the Austrian law is keeping an absolute chokehold on any possibility of developing mountain biking tourism due to a law made in 1975, a law that is basically 50 years old, the infamous Forstgesetz, 
or in English the Forestry Act. So this Forestry Act made in 1975 is the central legal source of forestry law. The aim of the Forestry Act is to preserve the forest and the forest soil with its productive capacity as well as to ensure the multifunctional effects of the forest and sustainable forest management. Whew, that's a lot of big words. Basically, this is something good. It's made to protect a lot of things that are very important to Austrian society. But are we going to stick to these words written half a century ago? Or is Austria going to adapt to the realities of current day mountain tourism just like its very capable neighbors? Even Austrians who care nothing about mountain biking or politicians for that matter have some very good reasons to be open to change because let's look at some numbers here. According to their own government websites, pre-pandemic tourism contributed to 7.6% of the GDP. In 2019, domestic and foreign guests spent around 37.9 billion euros. I hope you come to see that talking about people riding their bicycles in the woods isn't just talking about protecting animals who don't like to be disturbed, or maybe the local farmer who doesn't like it when two or three bikers cross his land per week. No, people riding bicycles in the woods is also talking about massive flows of money, which make a huge part of the GDP. It's talking about supporting local economies. It's talking about depopulation in the Alps being halted by healthy tourism. It's talking about competitive relevance compared to their neighboring countries. So I am very curious to see what Austria is going to try to change to correct this, not only so I can ride my bike on a single track in the Austrian Alps, but also to see what this might bring for the future of the country in general. April 10, 2024. Vice-Chancellor Werner Kogler and Tourism State Secretary Susanne Kraus-Winkler stand in front of the cameras and announce the development of a national mountain biking strategy for Austria. The current situation limits the economy and tourism and offers mountain bikers insufficient legal opportunities to practice their sport, which is why a tough decision has been taken as Werner Kogler describes it. And, in collaboration with the federal states and ministries, an Austria-wide mountain bike strategy has been developed. Shortly afterwards, the national mountain bike strategy was actually approved by the Council of Ministers. Great, this is all good and well, but what is this national mountain biking strategy? So as far as I understand it, the decision has been made to make one, but the actual strategy itself or new rules themselves are not yet into place. Let's go a little bit deeper into what this means. The federal government, together with the federal states, is striving to develop an Austria-wide mountain bike strategy that meets the demands for mountain bike routes, promotes the use of the potential for business and tourism, expands the local recreation offering for the population and respects basic and property rights, takes into account the aspects of protecting nature and Austrian forests. So with this proposal in the Council of Ministers, Austria has finally an outspoken high political understanding that not only is mountain biking very popular, it is also a very important economical factor. The current situation is completely inadequate and some Austrian-wide changes have to be made to break the status quo. So what does this national strategy actually do? Well, as far as I understand it, the Austrians are trying to come up with a Vertragslösung. A Vertragslösung basically is a common set of rules based on an agreement where all the stakeholders, basically landowners, land managers, come to an agreement that trails crossing their land can and may be used as bike trails. Now, this is still going to be Austria. I wouldn't expect uh, some uh, major change like suddenly changing into the Graubünden model where basically any trail is a shared trail. They will still need the agreements from all the um, landowners etc. So it's not going to be that easy. But if they can come up with this nationwide Vertrag, that these trails can be used also by cyclists, this would be a very major step forward. <music> 
When looking at the statement of this vice chancellor, we basically see a bullet point checklist of things that we need to be able to achieve in order to have more legal bike trails in Austria. Let's have a closer look here. So one very important box to check is to put an end to the question of liability where the owner is responsible for the safety on his or her trails. They will also need to be able to agree on standardizing things like signage and signposting. Another aspect is that they need to create leisure space planning that outlines something bigger than just every little village making up its own mind. It needs to be coordinated and on a larger regional if not national scale. Allowing more trails, signposting them, etc. is going to take some work. So you cannot expect the natural trail network to be checked and maintained and groomed such as you would see in a bike park, far from it. But even the simplest thing like checking if the sign is still there after winter, this job needs to be done by somebody. So there will need to become some kind of arrangement of who is going to do this? Is it going to be the local municipality? Is it going to be local mountain bike clubs, etc.? And then also finally, we will need to, well, Austria will need to sweeten the deal by making all of this somewhat attractive to the landowners in some way. In the end here, I think the most important part of it all is that we finally have the highest political representatives in Austria engaging themselves, promising to do good things for mountain biking. And with that, not only comes their political voice, also comes the fact that there, there will need to be budget, time, budget and commitment to do all this. So who is behind this? Things like this don't just come out of nowhere. They must have been simmering on back plates for years and they must have taken a lot of effort behind the scenes, completely invisible to us. And in this aspect, I think it's very important to mention Harald Maia. Harald Meyer is the initiator of the Mountain Bike Congress in Zalbach. So he has been pushing this idea of the national mountain bike strategy in the last couple of years and he must have been extremely determined and extremely persistent to reach the result that we are seeing today. So in this aspect, even from an Ausländer, a foreigner like me, Harald, thank you very much for what you have done for us. Obviously, none of this would be possible if it was only Harald Meyer being standing behind this idea. We have actually more very important partners that are supporting this. The Austria-wide mountain bike strategy is supported by all nine federal states plus the four ministries. This is broad, solid support for our sport and we have never had this before. So with arguments such as targeted steering, mountain biking as an economic factor and taking into account the interests of all stakeholders, even conservative forces such as the Chamber of Agriculture or the Austrian land and forestry companies, we're able to get behind the national mountain biking strategy. This is huge. Now let's see what is next. Besides talking about the budgets that will be given to this, they will need to set up a small office, a small body, probably consisting out of a handful of people that will be able to coordinate all of this stuff. And by being outside of the existing structures, they will hopefully be able to withstand forces of things like elections a little bit more. In May there will be a summit, the IMBA or IMBA Europe Summit in Mödling and there they will coordinate together and work on a national strategy. Successful implementation will also require a united voice from the community itself. In other words, there will need to be lots of talking between lots of people because you can't just have two or three people in an office in Vienna and then between them and what's actually happening on the ground, there will need to be more representatives and more voices. So people like clubs, lo local, locals that are taking initiative, etc. So we have a long way to go. Not only budgets, setting up an office, having a handful of people coordinate with a very broad layer nation nationwide. All of this is really exciting news and it makes me so positive because for the longest time knowing Austrians because I have a little bit of family in the Stubai Valley sometimes we say the narrower the valley the narrower the mind and Austrians can be like that a little bit. I'm sorry guys I know there's the others and the others are doing an absolute brilliant job trying to push this through trying to move forward into the future. So thank you so much and I would like to end with a quote. It's a quote from George Bernard Shaw. It basically says, 
People who say it cannot be done should not interrupt those who are doing it. People like Harald Meyer, all the other guys in Austria and girls pushing this, thank you so much.